Hey there. Picking up from our last example, we learned how to pass arguments into a decorator and have those uh, arguments come all the way through. This allowed us to customize the units of our timer decorator here. And just to show you, we have it set to milliseconds. We could run that. And if we come over here and set this back to seconds, we can run that and we get uh, seconds as the unit of our timed output here. So that's super handy. But one of the annoying things when we try to uh, not pass any arguments here and leave off calling this uh, decorator generator, as we were calling them, um, is we get an error. So as we can see, it says outer takes one positional argument, but two are given. And the reason for that, if we kind of break this down, um, let's take a look. Let's print out what units is that we actually get through and run this. And you'll see that the result of uh, units is actually a function. And why is that? Well, when we, when we write this and we don't actually call this timer function here, uh, Python takes this at syntax and just looks at this as, oh, this is the decorator function. So it's gonna pass in um, whatever function we're decorating. In this case, it's add. So uh, we actually see that the function add is what was passed in as that first argument. And that makes sense because that's what we had done originally. So how do we get around that? If we think about it, instead of returning this outer function here, um, we need to make a bit of a decision in terms of what do we get as our first argument here. So Let's try do this. Let's make a new funk, maybe uh, for, let's call it funk underscore maybe, so we can differentiate it. Um, I've seen this done in some other places, so we can set this to none. Um, so that means if we don't get uh, a function pass in, then there should be none. But in cases where we leave off calling this, Python should pass in the function here. So let's just print um, func and we'll have the print units there too. So we'll just see what we get over here. And okay, so that's good. So the function is coming through and then our units are left as is, that's great. Um, we still have some issues down here uh, with how everything's getting passed through, but let's take a closer look. So. What happens now if we do this? Well, if we call this now, obviously we would have to pass in our own function, um, but because it has a default value, we can just avoid passing it in this uh, uh, into this function here. And we can actually just set the units if we want um, to milliseconds, or we could leave this off. But if we do this, um, everything should work as before and you see Obviously, func was never set, so it's none. Units are what we passed, and everything works just fine. Um, we can leave this off, and everything should work just fine again. It uses the default value. That's great. Now let's try to see what happens if we don't call this as a function. And well, we know that now func is going to get um, the function add passed through it, so we can use that to make some decisions. Because we know that this outer function here really is the thing that needs to have our function passed all the way through. And if func is passed as this first argument, then that means that the brackets here were left off. So let's use that to our advantage. And instead of just returning outer, let's, um, let's check the value of func. So if func um, is none, well, that's our normal case, right? So in that normal case, all we want to do is return outer. That's the same as we had before. Else, let's uh, call outer and pass it in the handle to the func that uh, was passed in by Python. I'll make sure to return this. So now let's take a look at what happens when we run this. All right, so that's interesting. Now we have not called timer here as we were before, and everything seems to be working. If you think about it, what's going on? So 
the function add is getting passed in here. Then we see when we print, we get it. Um, now at the bottom, we realize that we have an, an, a handle to a function add that was passed in. So that means we need to return this outer function, but we need to call it to then return the final um, inner wrapped function. And if you're getting confused, we can think about how we would define a decorator normally that didn't get passed in arguments. So let's make it just a little simple one here and just call it a logger. Um, and this would take a function, right? And within it, we'd have a new function called a wrapper, which would take some arguments and keyword arguments. And these are going to pass through and then we'd uh, maybe print logging and then return the call to func, passing in the args and keyword arguments. And then we'd return wrapper. So if we use this logger, uh, we see that works nicely. So we've got a little bit of logging and call the function. That's great. The form of this though is that we have this function and we pass, Python passes it the function that we want to decorate. Whereas in this case, Python passed us the function we want to decorate. But because we've kind of nested things one more level deep, we need to pass that all the way through. And that's why we need to call this outer function and pass in uh, add, which is getting passed through here. So when in doubt, just always try to go back to the most basic version of a decorator and kind of build up from there to think about uh, these nested functions like this, because otherwise it gets a little bit confusing. So hopefully that was helpful to kind of show how you can uh, write a decorator that takes arguments, but still allow you to uh, decorate functions with it uh, in a normal way when you don't have to pass in arguments. And obviously, as you will see, uh, you have to pass in things as keyword arguments. Otherwise, it'll uh, take anything that's just a positional argument and assign it here, which we don't want because it'll mess up our logic down below. And while we're here, because we have now two decorators, a timer and a logger, um, we can take a look at another common question that people have around decorators is, what happens if you add two decorators? So let's take a look here. Let's add our logger above here. So here we see that the logging came before the function call, and then we got the time to put at the end. But this doesn't quite explain the order very well. And the reason is because the logging is always going to come before the timer in the way we have it currently set up. And that's because we're calling our logging before we call the actual function we're passed. And in the timer case, we're calling the timer after we call the function. So no matter what, we're always going to have our logging first and always going to have the timer second. And to show that, we can add uh, another timer and another logger and see what happens. So we have all of our kind of pre-processing up front, the function, all of our post-processing at the bottom. But now what happens if we both decorators have pre-processing and post-processing? Well, let's try it here. So let's do print uh, calculating time. And here we'll do print logging after. And if we run that, we get our logging comes first, then calculating time, logging time, function call. Now we get time, logging, time, logging. This is super interesting. And if you look closely at this, it makes a lot of sense because this logging and logging after are wrapping this calculating time and the timed output, which is wrapping logging and logging after which is wrapping another calculating time. And on the very inside, we have our function call. And that's what we're doing here. We have our function call, which is wrapped by a timer. Over here, you see the first level out from the function call is a timer, makes sense. The next level out is a logger. Next level out is a logger, starting from the function call. And then another timer and another logger. And we work all the way up. 
So if you're trying to think about the order of operations, you always have to think about coming from the outside in and then from the inside out, as if you're kind of cutting through the layers of an onion. So here we're cutting through, we're getting the logging, the time, the logging, the time, the function, and then cutting all the way out, we get the reverse. We get the time, the logging, the time, the logging. So we think about what this looks like in code. We start from the top. We're gonna get the logging time, logging time function, and then we reverse it on the way out. We get the time, logging, time, logging. So keep that in mind. And that's why these decorators are really these wrapper functions. Um, and every layer you add is just another wrapper that goes all the way around your inner function. So hopefully that didn't confuse you too much and help you understand how multiple decorators interact with each other. And it, when in doubt, just try to write out these simple examples for yourself that don't do too much. And you can kind of trace the code out yourself and play around with this stuff because even when I write decorators, I often get confused and forget the order and I'll just code up something like this to remind myself to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And as always, you know, write tests and make sure that those make sense. But that's it for today and hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.